All right, in the Texas Football Orange Blood YouTube channel, we are in our tailgate, our pregame, and we are visiting with a legend at the University of Texas, one of my favorite Texas Longhorn players of all time, not only because I covered him at the University of Texas, but because now we host a show together on Sirius XM Big 12 Radio. What's up, Foz? Welcome, uh, welcome to the tailgate show, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, excited for what this weekend holds for uh, the Texas football team. And man, uh, I love to have a blast breaking it down every Monday morning with you as a co-host on, on the Big 12 uh, this morning. Absolutely. Love having you there. All right. So let's talk Texas, Oklahoma State. And, you know, for me, this matchup is strength on strength, you know, with, with Texas's offense and Oklahoma State's defense. So where do you, you know, wh what do you see with this matchup? Yeah, I think you just explained it as as the two strengths of both of these teams. I, I think Oklahoma State offensively, they have an identity. They want to run the ball. And uh, you can see that expressed very well with the way Jalen Warren has been utilized in the way that uh, he's been able to gain a lot of yardage and be part of the focal point of this offense, as well as sprinkling in Spencer Sanders on some of the zone read stuff and quarterback design run. Uh, the problem that I have with Oklahoma State's offense is kind of the inconsistencies uh, mm -hmm. that Spencer Sanders has shown. And it's not even just this year, uh, but kind of throughout his career. He can go and have a four touchdown passing game and then have a four interception game, it seems like, uh, the following week. So it's very hard, in my opinion, to get a gauge on which Spencer Sanders you're going to get. Uh, this upcoming Saturday because of how wildly inconsistent his play has been. But uh, I do know one thing is that whenever he plays Texas, he is one of the most explosive and dynamic players on the field. And uh, you always have to account for him and be able to find ways to uh, obviously contain uh, and make sure he doesn't create the explosive plays. Uh, and then that brings me to Texas defense uh, where they're lacking as well is they missed too many tackles against Oklahoma. Uh, and then obviously gave up some of the deep balls uh, whenever Caleb Williams came in uh, and was able to connect on some of those those big time plays that afforded them to be able to get in a uh, scoring position. So I, I think the defense has to, number one, get back to the fundamentals. They got to learn to see what they're hitting and, and reading, diagnosing the mm -hmm. run uh, because they were obviously gashed for over 300 yards rushing for the second time this season. So uh, it has not been fixed. Uh, so they got to find a way to get back to the fundamentals of reading, run, uh, gap integrity, and then, and then tackling soundly. Uh, and then number two, they, they can't give up the big explosive play. Uh, and Spencer Sanders is prone to be a guy that can create explosive plays. So they have to find a way to mitigate that uh, if they want to have some success. I almost forgot to mention, of course, you can catch Fozzie as part of the pregame coverage for this game and all games for the Texas Longhorns on Longhorn Network pregame and postgame before, after the game. Check out the great work Fozzie's doing on Longhorn Network. Um, Fozzie, what, what do you think Sark's approach was this week in trying to sort of, you know, put the emotional toll of losing last week behind them and then get them ready for another really, you know, really big game here? It's like, Tough, tough circumstances here to go from what they just went from now to a really good team at Oklahoma State. Yeah, very true. And, and that's something that you, you probably don't have too many words to explain kind of how the team is feeling or, or what that feeling is like once you come off such a, a traumatic type of loss uh, where you're up by 21 points at one point then find yourself losing it in the last three seconds uh, of the game. So uh, they went on a roller coaster ride, but it one thing that I do know from Sark uh, early in his time of being a head coach at the University of Texas is that he's going to preach that they keep grinding and getting back to what they know how to do best. Uh, and it was kind of made apparent uh, whenever they first lost and got drugged by Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, the mindset was to go back in, in the lab, con continue to figure out what went wrong, fix the problem and then move forward uh, and, and put up points like we hadn't seen before in Texas in quite some time. So uh, I know the the opponent was Rice after they faced Arkansas, but uh, that offense looked very, very good, uh, well-oiled machine. That was Casey Thompson's first start. He was responsible for six touchdowns uh, the following week against Texas Tech as well. Like it, it just turned into a well-oiled machine. And I think the response after the loss from Arkansas 
Uh, I think that's kind of something that Sark probably implemented into this team again this week mm. uh, with the response coming off of Oklahoma. Now, the difference is Oklahoma State's a much better team than Rice. So uh, <laughs> they're, they're going to do some things to, to obviously get in position and, and make, make some guys miss and make some plays. But ultimately, I think Sark has the right approach as far as getting back to the fundamentals and then preaching, uh, just drilling it in their heads to be able to rely on what you practice on uh, and let that be your guiding tool whenever you need some help. I always um, love to get your your input inside of the running back position, obviously. So Bijan Robinson, you know, what have you liked about what you've seen from him this year? And like what stood out to you about the way that Sark is using him this year, maybe differently than he was used last year, which is that yeah, he didn't use this year. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> He's actually being used <laughs> on a consistent basis. Uh, but being able to get the ball in a variety of different ways, we've seen uh, Bijan gets split out against Louisiana in the first week, uh, catches a post for an explosive play. Uh, obviously, we've seen him catch out of backfield. He has several touchdown catches. Uh, and then also Coach Sark against TCU uh, lined him up in empty and then shift in motion back to the backfield to create a different look to the defense so that they have to defend multiple different angles that Bijan can hurt you on. And so whenever I look at how he's being utilized. He's literally put all over the field and, and Coach Sark finds a way to give him the ball. And uh, that's one thing that Sark kind of stressed at the beginning of the season before the season even began was that he's going to find a way to get his playmakers the ball. And I think it's become very evident here uh, just within a few weeks of Big 12 play um, and, and throughout the course of the season, Bijan is, is close to a thousand yards rushing already. Uh, he has almost... 10 touchdowns total. Uh, you see a Xavier Worthy, who's a, another playmaker for this Texas offense. He leads the Big 12 in receiving. Uh, and then you got Casey Thompson, who's leading the Big 12 in passing touchdowns. So uh, those are his like big three offensively. And I love the way that they kind of carry some of the, the load uh, to be able to make sure that one person doesn't get more uh, attention or, or gets an opportunity to be able to be utilized whenever the defense focuses on somebody else. And I think that's probably what happened with Oklahoma and, and Xavier Worthy for this past game was Oklahoma was geared up to stop Bijan. Obviously, they said, hey, we're going to make you beat us by giving the ball to somebody else. And Xavier Worthy showed up big time as well as Casey Thompson. So them being able to feed off of each other is extremely helpful for Bijan to be able to uh, continue to sustain the, sustain the pace that he's already uh, been on this season so far. Sark mentioned this week that, you know, the issues they had defensively were not fitting the run properly. I mean, you could also say tackling was an issue too. Um, yeah. Is it fixable? Is this defense fixable? Can it, I mean, how fixable is it? I think it's very fixable. So the thing that I noticed was Oklahoma probably got a bulk of their rushing yards on about five or six plays. Uh, that that were big gains and the problem with it was the recognition of the play especially the counter play uh, that direct snap counter play you see some of the misdirection stuff where uh, Kennedy Brooks fakes the pitch to Caleb Williams Caleb Williams runs outside and you see both linebackers flow uh, with Caleb Williams outside, and Kennedy yeah. Brooks to for a couple of steps before they realize that hey the guard and the H-back are actually pulling and now we got to fill our gaps over here. But by that time, they're already getting sealed off and creating a wall. And, and it allows for Kennedy Brook to have a big gash. So um, this has not been a problem that just occurred this past week. Unfortunately, it seems like Texas linebackers have had a struggle for the past maybe five years of recognizing gap integrity and recognizing where they're supposed to fit. And this is one of the things that Michael Griffin, who also uh, covers on Longhorn Network with me as well that played safety here at the University of Texas is probably his biggest pet peeve is like he always brings it up that these guys do not know what gap they're supposed to hit and uh, it's, a problem. It's, become, <laughs> it's become a problem and it's become evident more and more and obviously uh, teams that can run it well will expose you if you not have not figured it out and Oklahoma State is a great running team so if Texas has not figured it out it would be evident very early in the game on Saturday, but I do think it's fixable with film review uh, and then repetition. You just got to see it over and over in practice and then trust in your technique and believe in what you see. 
Well, and, and, you know, I mean, Spencer Sanders has struggled con- to consistently throw the football, but one area that he has been successful is in, in his running ability, his dual threat ability. And that's one of the things where it's like, oh no, you know, if, if him and Jalen Warren, like if you're Mike Gundy and, and um, you know, the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma state, um, you know, Casey Dunn, then, you know, those are the things it's like, I'm going to watch film in Oklahoma and I'm going to see exactly what they did to, uh, to Texas. And I'm going to try to do the exact same thing with this Jalen Warren, Spencer Sanders, two headed monster at running the football. Yeah, absolutely. And then another thing that even in the past two games that Spencer Sanders has played against Texas, he has just been the difference maker using yeah. his legs. Like that's what he does. And, and Texas has struggled kind of in the past. I, I keep saying the five years, but running quarterbacks have given Texas football the, 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 it's given them fits and uh it was made mm. apparent very apparent with max duggan uh made apparent with yeah. spencer sanders made apparent with Kyler murray made apparent with jalen hurts uh like if you can run the ball you you kind of get an opportunity to expose some of the things that texas defenses have not basically defended properly in the past so uh that's probably the biggest area of concern for me going into this game is how will they manage to be able to obviously read and, and diagnose the counterplay? Because I, I'm sure Oklahoma State has the counterplay and will run it to see if they if Texas has fixed a problem. And then how will they handle the zone read uh, with, with Spencer Sanders pulling the ball? And then whenever a play breaks down, how will they be able to contain and have a spy on Spencer Sanders to make sure he doesn't get those huge chunk yardage uh, whenever he rolls out of the pocket and, and creates something with his leg. So uh, that has me most nervous in this game uh, since Texas has not traditionally stopped that well in the past five years. So I'm um, hoping Coach PK, the defensive coordinator, has found a way to to get them to play on a level that I think this Texas defense can play at. You pick them to win this game? I do. I do. I pick them to win. I haven't finalized my score yet. I've been toying back and forth. Uh, with what I want to see, but I'm I'm going leaning towards a 38-33 game. I think it'll be I think it'll be one possession. It, and it's it's because all the games that they've played in the past, yeah. what, six years, seven years have come down to one possession. And uh it it's just for whatever reason, man, like I said, Mike Gundy knows how to play Texas well. He hasn't always come out on the winning side every time, but uh, it's traditionally a very good game and, and you have high caliber players on both sides uh, making big plays. So I think it'll be another close game that Texas will have to try to find a way to finish. And I think they found a way to finish this week. Uh, whereas last week, they just weren't able to find that missing link. Fozzie Whitaker, make sure to watch the pregame postgame coverage on Longhorn Network for all Texas football games, including this game against Oklahoma State. And then on Mondays, join us on Sirius XM's Big 12 Radio from 7 to 10 a.m. on Channel 375. We'll break it all down for you. Foz, appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all having me.